Happy Pride, we're kicking off Pride in San Diego. A DUI crash kills a five-year-old girl. Tonight, we hear from the grieving family. It's opening day at Del Mar, and racing fans are greeted by protesters. News 8 is going to court to unseal records in the gun violence restraining order against Larry Miliete. How fire officials are preparing for a dangerous wildfire season. And do members of Congress get free health care for life? We verify. And some people are born to serve both their country and people in need. News 8 at 6 starts right now. The San Diego Pride's official kickoff party just got going in Hillcrest tonight. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. We made it to Friday. I'm Marcella Lee. This year's theme is resilience, celebrating perseverance through the pandemic and the fight for equality. The parade and festival were canceled this year, but some traditions are back with a mix of both in-person and virtual events. News 8's Abby Alford joins us live from the block party where the celebrations are really coming to life. Abby? Well, Carlo Barcella, sorry you can't see me, but we actually have the best view here on the Ferris wheel. The block party's just kicking off at 6 o'clock. The Stonewall rally is just about to start to celebrate all those who've been on the front lines fighting for equality. We are here, we are clear, and we are ready to jam and just rejoice with each other. Resilience is the theme of this year's San Diego Pride. It feels like the world is falling apart and we just need this. The official Pride Parade may have been canceled, but not the celebration. Woo! All right. This is where I truly belong. People are flying in from all over the country. Hillcrest is full and people were coming no matter what. Including Jake and Jason McManus from Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. We're, we're getting back and I think we're going to be back better. They come every year to celebrate their wedding anniversary. San Diego has a reputation of the best like party. The Hillcrest Business Association hosts the Pride Block Party and says this Pride will bring that economic jolt the community and city needs. This is going to launch us back. Hillcrest is back. This year's sold out Pride Block Party is extended to Saturday with a drag queen show featuring famous queens. Earlier in the day, the county raised the progressive flag. It is our honor as a group to champion and fly the progress flag for the first time ever at a county facility. The six progressive stripes added to the pride flag represent marginalized LBGTQ plus communities. We are strong, we are able, we're not going to let anybody bring us down regardless of race, gender, sexuality. While diversity, tolerance and acceptance are celebrated, the fight for equality continues. We're here, we're surviving, we're thriving, and we're going to fight through until we are equal citizens under the law. Love conquers all. Love wins, love, love wins. Love wins. Well, love does win. And one of the traditions that are back, that is back, excuse me, is the raising of the pride flag. And that usually happens at the end of the Stonewall Rally, which will be about 7 o'clock. Now, the block party tickets are sold out, but that you can watch just from the street for free. There are so many events going on, Marcella, this weekend. Uh, sold out event, Abby, uh, and a lot of things, as you mentioned, going on this weekend. What else is on tap? Well, there are about 30 events going on this weekend. And what's so cool about this, Marcella, is that if you're still not comfortable or you're not able to make any of these events in person, they still have plenty of virtual events going on this weekend. We have all of the action on the News 8 San Diego Pride Guide. I love the bird's eye view you're giving us, Abby. How cool is that? It's it's. I know. Isn't this incredible? I mean, it I haven't is. been on a Ferris wheel in forever. I, and I got here earlier today and I said, this is where our live oh, shot's going to be. That is so you cool. You cannot get a better view mm -hmm. of the rally, of hill, of love. Ah, oh. oh, love <laughs> always wins. And you're working. What a great assignment for a Friday. Enjoy the view, Abby. We'll see you in a bit. Ah. Oh. Escondido police are still looking for a man they say stole a nurse's purse at Palomar Hospital. There were reports of shots possibly fired at a security guard, but a shooting has not been confirmed, and we do know that no one was wounded. Hospital operations have not been affected. We'll bring you any updates as we get them.
The Coast Guard stopped the search for a man whose fishing boat caught fire and sank off the North County coast. The fire on the 50 foot fishing boat was reported yesterday morning about three miles off Carlsbad. Crews on three Coast Guard cutters battled the fire while a helicopter scanned the ocean for the unidentified missing man. That missing man lived on the boat. No one else was believed to be on board. The search was stopped at 8 this morning. A San Diego doctor pleaded guilty today to trying to import what he believed to be hydroxychloroquine smuggled out of China. Jennings Staley was charged last year with marketing and selling COVID-19 treatment packs priced as high as nearly $4,000 for a family of four. Prosecutors say Staley believed he had imported 26 pounds of hydroxychloroquine powder, but the packages turned out to only contain baking soda. Staley is expected to be sentenced in October. He formerly operated Skinny Beach Med Spas in and around San Diego. Heartbreak and devastation for the family of a five-year-old girl who was killed in a crash. Her mom, 27-year-old Capri Coleman, is facing felony DUI charges in the deadly crash that also seriously injured her one-year-old son and three-year-old daughter. She was supposed to be arraigned in court today, but did not appear for medical reasons. News 8's Kirsten Holmes spoke with the children's grieving grandfather. I spoke with Capri's family at their home. News 8 viewers might recognize this family because just a couple of years ago, we all pitched in when they lost everything they had in an RV fire. The family has a permanent home right now, but they are again devastated at the loss of five-year-old Kesha because they say they just celebrated her birthday. Oh my God, oh my God. Uh, there's no way to explain the feelings that I felt when they told me Kesha was gone. Oh my God, it was like just being hit on the head with a sledgehammer. Derek Palacio is Capri Coleman's stepdad and five-year-old Kesha's grandfather. I woke up two, three o'clock in the morning and our phones had been going off, you know. I wanted help for my daughter because she was going down the wrong path, you know. But this is not the way that I wanted help for her. You know, I thought that we can do it together. CHP says Capri was driving under the influence just before 2.30 Wednesday morning with her small children, one-year-old Knowledge, three-year-old Kamaya, and five-year-old Kesha. Knowledge was found still in his car seat. Kamaya and Kesha were thrown from the car in the crash, and Kesha was pronounced dead at the scene. I was just so hurt because I didn't see my baby again, you know. She'll never be a, get a chance to have her grandpa come see her at the father-daughter dance or graduation. You wake up with someone every morning for five years. Come on now, you know what I'm saying? That's a part of me being missing, snatched away. And as this family grieves, they're praying that Kamaya, who's in a coma, will recover as they try to wrap their heads around how to move forward. I have to explain to her, you know, why her sister's no longer around and her mom. Derek says he's committed to loving and healing together as a family. Well, you can't forget, but you know, uh, if you can't forgive them, how could the Lord forgive you? The family has started a GoFundMe to help pay for cash final expenses and knowledge and Kamaya's medical bills. If you want to help out, go to CBS8.com and click on this story. Kirsten Holmes, News 8. County leaders are working to get the word out about wildfire danger before another disaster strikes. Last year, California experienced six of the largest and most destructive fires in state history. This week, county supervisors approved a plan to spend more than two and a half million dollars to manage brush and vegetation along our roads. News 8's Ariana Cohen has more from today's media conference with county leaders. Wildfire season is upon us and an interruption in today's meeting just goes to show how busy local firefighters and other officials really are. San Diego County leaders gathered to spread awareness of wildfire safety at Gillespie Field Friday morning. But right in the middle of the media conference, a call came in to one of the choppers. One second, I'm sorry. What, one of our helicopters just got a call. They're going to have to take off, so we're just going to pause for a minute. And they took off. <laughs> 
We take the increased risk of wildfire very seriously. Officials are taking new measures. Cal Fire has hired over 120 net new firefighter positions just for San Diego County. We have initiated a nearly $6.5 million project to increase the capacity at the Ramona Air Attack Base. The County of San Diego has invested almost $600 million towards expanding our fire capacity. We have to do this because of the dangers. They also want to remind San Diegans of personal preparedness tips, which include creating a family disaster plan, making a emergency supply kit, and having duplicates of medical prescriptions and insurance papers. We've seen fires all over the county, north, south, east. They can happen anywhere. They can happen without a moment's notice and just be ready. The helicopter that left during the meeting today was actually a sheriff's mission, and they handed out these preparedness tips here. Families can also go to readyforwildfire.org. You can sign up for text alerts there and also create an evacuation plan. We have that link up on our website. I'm Ariana Cohen for News 8. All right, Ariana, thanks. The summer racing season kicked off today in Del Mar, along with the return of fans. Capacity was reduced to less than 50%. About 16,000 people were allowed in for opening day, which was a sold out event, but there was no shortage of extravagant hats. The summer racing season runs through September 6th. Not all are happy about the return of racing, though. This racetrack has been abusing and killing horses for 82 years. On 2016, on opening day, Presidential Air died on this track in one of the races. Horses continue to die at racetracks all over the world. Protesters stood outside the gates. They say racing horses is abusive and deadly. They also say the racetrack is ignoring the statewide drought by using 150,000 gallons of water every day during the racing season. But they weren't the only group making their voices heard. These protesters were actually met by counter protesters who support racing and the jobs the racetrack provides. There's workers here that have been working in horse racing for generations. It's more than just a job, it's a culture. People uh, are very proud of their work, you know, here at the racetrack. And uh, those that are saying, hey, shut down horse racing and these workers can go flip burgers, you know, that's just very disrespectful to their profession. Horse racing advocate Oscar De La Torre says 2,000 jobs at the Del Mar racetrack alone would be affected if horse racing were to, quote, shut down.